50 years ago this weekend, the University of Mississippi was integrated by force. The federal government intervened to force the University of Mississippi to admit an African-American student against the state's will, asserting that federal law overruled what the state wanted to do in this case. The federal government saying to Ole Miss, you cannot operate your state university as a segregated whites-only institution. That same principle, that same constitutional protection applies not just to public institutions, but to private institutions as well, some of them, right? Under the 1964 Civil Rights Act, you cannot operate a private business that serves the public that also excludes people based on their race. You can't operate your business, for example, like this, right? Even if it is your private business, and even if your local law enforcement authorities are okay with it, and even if your state's governor says stuff like segregation now, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever. You're, you're part of the United States of America, and under our Constitution, you cannot operate racially discriminatory businesses. Nobody thinks you can do this anymore, right? Lives were lost and a lot of blood was shed to enforce that basic constitutional American principle. But it is settled now, right? Well, it, it was settled. It was a settled matter in mainstream American political thought until the last couple of years. When Kentucky Republican Rand Paul won a seat in the United States Senate in 2010, it was after a campaign in which that future senator said that the 1964 Civil Rights Act made him uncomfortable. He wasn't sure, he said, that anybody should be able to tell a private business that, for example, you have to serve black people. Would you have voted for the Civil Rights Act of 1964? I like the Civil Rights Act in the sense that it ended discrimination in all public um, uh, domains, and I'm all in favor of that. But? <laughs> you had to ask me the but. Um, I don't like the idea of telling private business owners. I abhor racism. I think it's a bad business decision to ever exclude anybody from your restaurant. But at the same time, I do believe in private ownership. But I think there should be absolutely no discrimination in anything that gets any public funding. And that's most of what the Civil Rights Act was about, uh, to my mind. But maybe voting against the Civil Rights Act, which wasn't just about governmental discrimination, but public accommodation. The idea that people who provided well, services that were open to the public had to do so in a non-discriminatory fashion. Let me ask you a specific so that we don't get into the esoteric hypotheticals well, there's, well, there's here. Ten, there's, ten different, there's ten different titles, you know, to the Civil Rights Act, and nine out of ten deal with public institutions, and I'm absolutely in favor of. One deals with private institutions, and had I been around, I would have tried to modify that. Then candidate Rand Paul and I went around and around and around on that issue for about 20 minutes on this show back when he was running. And he would not say that businesses discriminating on the basis of race should be illegal. He said he was against it and it was a bad idea, but it shouldn't be illegal. That was early on in his race. But within a day of that interview on this show, Rand Paul walked it all back. He recanted what he had said before, releasing a statement saying that he does support the Civil Rights Act. He said, quote, I will unequivocally state that I will not support any efforts to repeal the Civil Rights Act of 1964. So that happened. That was in 2010, right? He had started to run a Senate campaign that was against the Civil Rights Act, that was against banning segregation and racial discrimination from businesses. He got pressed on that issue until it nearly broke him, and then he recanted. That was in 2010. Now, in 2012, next big election, the Republicans are running another Senate candidate who is making a very similar case against civil rights law. In this case, he's making an argument that businesses in this country should be able to discriminate in how they pay their employees. In other words, if a private business wants to pay its Asian workers or its black workers half of what it pays its white workers, that should be allowed because, you know, freedom. They should be allowed to pay women less than they pay men. It's not illegal discrimination on his view. It's just a private business's private decision. Yes, sir. You voted against the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act. I think everybody knows that. Why do you think it is okay for a woman to be paid less for doing the same work as a man? Well, first of all, the premise of your question is, is that I'm making that, that particular distinction. I believe in free enterprise. I don't think the government should be telling people what you pay and what you don't pay. I think it's about freedom. If somebody wants to hire somebody and they agree on a salary, that's fine, however it wants to work. And uh, so the government sticking its nose into all kinds of things has gotten us into huge trouble. 
Democratic Senator Claire McCaskill has just released that tape of her opponent in this year's election, Congressman Todd Akin. Todd Akin explaining why it's cool for businesses to discriminate when they pay their employees. Who's the government to come in and tell businesses they have to pay people the same money for the same work? If business owners want to discriminate on race or on gender, say a business owner wants to pay a woman less than a man because she is a woman, that's the business's decision. If they want to pay, pay black people less than white people, that must be up to them too, right? The country has a debt to pay Todd Akin this year, because in a year when the boundaries all get very fuzzy, Todd Akin, as a man, has become the personification of the bounds of Republican political acceptability. We, we thought that he had established that saying some rapes are legitimate and some are illegitimate uh, put him outside the bounds of political acceptability for Republicans. We thought that put him outside the realm of what you can say and still be a Republican candidate for U.S. Senate. And that was true for about a month when the Republicans turned their backs on him. But now Republicans have decided they're actually okay with him on that. He picked up the endorsements of former Missouri Governor Kit Bond and Missouri Senator Roy Blunt last week. These four sitting U.S. Senators are reportedly acting as honorary hosts of a Todd Akin fundraiser this Wednesday in Washington. And after saying that Todd Akin should drop out of the race, after saying that the party would not send him a penny, Republican Party Chairman Reince Priebus now says that the party is dedicated to doing everything it can to promote the entire ticket of Republicans running in Missouri, including Todd Akin. He says, quote, well, absolutely, that's a given. And as chairman of the party, I have an obligation to make sure we win as many seats in the Senate as possible. Todd Akin has already put his fellow Republicans in a pretty tough position by not jumping out of the race when he became the legitimate rape guy. Uh, but now that they've all given up on denouncing him, <laughs> now that they've decided that being the legitimate rape guy does not disqualify you from getting the support of the Republican Party establishment, now Todd Akin has a whole laundry list of other issues to test the threshold of Republican acceptable politics. Because since he floated his fake science theory about pregnancy and rape, since then, he has also described his Democratic opponent, the incumbent senator, as, quote, unladylike. Also, the folks at Right Wing Watch released video from him, uh, video of him from last year, reminiscing about spending time in jail for illegally blocking the entrance of an abortion clinic. And we now know that he is defending his vote against fair pay for women, not by saying that women's, uh, women don't suffer in terms of pay discrimination, but by saying instead that he just doesn't believe that discrimination is wrong. He doesn't believe that businesses should have to follow any laws about who they discriminate against. I don't think the government should be telling people what you pay and what you don't pay. The government shouldn't tell you what you pay and what you don't pay. Fair pay, schmear pay. Discrimination is just freedom for business owners who are getting a really good deal on their lady workers. Republicans now have to weigh how badly they want a Republican candidate for Senate in Missouri to win in the abstract. They have to weigh that against how much it's going to cost them to be associated with the legitimate rape, your unladylike, jailed abortion protester, I'm against civil rights guy in Missouri. And now that he has said that businesses should be able to discriminate in how they pay their workers, inevitably, what's the next question, right? Inevitably, you know he's going to be asked now about how else businesses should be allowed to discriminate. Inevitably now, Todd Akin is going to be asked about segregated lunch counters. And what do you think he's going to say to that? Do you want to bet $10,000 or otherwise? Hey, Mitt Romney. Hey, Reince Priebus. Are you sure you absolutely support Todd Akin's candidacy? You're just going to wait until he answers that next question on segregation before you cut him loose for good?